Okay, I'm going to go through an introduction to Monte Carlo simulation uh, using Python. And uh, we're going to be using, as an example, investing in some sort of S&P 500-like investment. And uh, we might start with a question like, if we had $10,000 today, we invested that plus an additional $10,000 every year, what's the probability that we would have at least a million dollars after 30 years of investing? Okay. I'm going to go through this example using a Jupyter Notebook, which I will uh, make available by following a link in the video. Um, if you don't have Jupyter, then you probably don't have a scientific Python platform. And while there's lots of choices for this, I'm recommending you download and install the Anaconda platform uh, at this link. Okay, so with that, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Uh, the first thing we're going to need to do is uh, import some libraries. So we'll get NumPy, some of pandas. Uh, we're going to use this magic function to let the plots that we generate show up in the notebook. And uh, then I'm going to get the locale uh, library so that I can format some stuff as, as currency. Okay, so if we were going to take sort of a traditional savings calculator approach to this problem, right, we'd uh, get some some sort of starting values here, right? I'll identify a present value. Uh, we'll get a time horizon. Okay, we'll get a, a rate of return and then our annual additions. And then we could just sort of loop through these things. Okay, and each time we loop through, we could calculate an ending balance and then at the end right we'd add in our annual investment okay we could print all that out And then we will set our next PV equal to our current ending balance. All right. So with all that, we could run out a an ending balance at the end of every year. All right. And so we can see that yeah, we earned seven percent in the first year on the ten thousand, and then at the end of the year we add another ten thousand. So that's our ending balance for for year one. And if I scroll down through here we can see that, okay, yeah, we have a million dollars at the end of that period. All right, the problem is that we can't reliably earn this 7% every year. All right, so uh, this may end up being close to an average portfolio balance, but we can pretty much guarantee we're not going to have an average portfolio balance. We're going to have uh, some probability of some kind of balance, okay? All right, so to get a little bit closer to what we're looking for here, all right, instead of uh, having a constant rate of return, we'll have an expected rate of return, all right, which uh, is some kind of long-run average for the S&P 500. I have it here as about 9%. 9 all right, on top of that expected return, we have this volatility, all right. So while that may be the average return, uh, we wouldn't be surprised to find returns of negative or or around, say, negative 9% or up as high as 27%. We were not going to be terribly surprised to see um, ending years like that, okay? All right, so if I plug in my same time horizon, all right, my same annual edition, all right, I've done a lot of this code ahead of time to save time in the video, all right, and uh, so uh, format that as, as a little bit of a, an output. No, I'll go ahead and run this. And uh, we see here I've isolated the return for a specific year. Okay, and so, uh, you know, the first year we pretty much got nothing. Uh, the second year we lost three. Then we got up around that expected return. It's not exactly 9%, but it's pretty close. All right, so when I get down at the bottom, instead of having that guaranteed million dollars that the static model shows us, uh, this outcome shows us that we have about 800,000, okay? If I run this cell again, okay, I'm going to get a different balance, all right? This time it's 900,000. 
And if I run it again, I'll get yet a different balance, all right? And it's 1.3 million. So which one of these do I choose? Do I just choose the high one and say that's what I'm going to have? Or uh, do I choose a low one? Uh, the truth is we don't know how much we're going to have, all right? But if we were to do the equivalent of running this cell, say, 5,000 times, we could characterize a distribution of ending values, and then we can make a probability statement about uh, how much we could expect to see at the end. All right, so that's what I've done down here. I've sort of set up a, a data frame to capture each iteration, each of our 5,000 iterations through, all right, and then uh, basically uh, just doing what I did in, this, in the cell above, all right, using this 9% uh, expected and 18% uh, uh, volatility. All right, we're going to go through and get 5,000 streams of these possible outcomes like I have above here. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and run that cell. All right, so it just takes a couple of seconds to, to run that 5,000 times. Uh, you, can, you can ratchet this up to 10 or 20,000. Uh, it, it probably takes about a minute to run 20,000 simulations the way I have this coded. Okay, uh, and so, yeah, we have now a table, basically a spreadsheet-style table uh, with 5,000 columns in it, all right, and each one of them has a stream of data. And to get an idea of what we're working with, okay, I can go ahead and uh, slice off the first five of these okay and then I will pass this variable in to into my simulation table all right so there are as expected the first five columns all right and we can get an idea of how varied this data uh, is going to end up being. Okay, and to get sort of a visualization of that, I'm going to go ahead and plot it. Okay, so with a simple line graph, we can see that, okay, uh, here's how. Uh, maybe the first five of, of this particular simulation, uh, how they look, all right? And we can see that, yeah, the data goes all over the place, all right? If we follow this purple line up, we see, okay, we went straight up pretty much, and then for a short period of time, we went straight down uh, and ended, uh, you know, somewhat higher. But we can see that, okay, uh, this this is a pretty good representation of the volatility that we might sometimes see in the market, Okay. All right, another thing you might want to do is start to uh, generate some summary statistics. All right, so down here I've, I've uh, created a, uh, a small table uh, that will give us the count of, of how many uh, simulations we've done. We'll get the mean using some of the uh, NumPy functions, so NumPy mean, NumPy standard deviation, max and min, okay, and uh, by looking at this location 29, all right, we saw earlier that the uh, passing in a list of column numbers in this in, for this table gave us uh, columns. Uh, here, this location 29 gives us the the last row, all right, the 29th row of the simulation. All right, so running that, we see that uh, you know with 5,000 simulations, we have this mean of 1.5 million. All right, we have a max and a min. All right, and you know these traditional uh, summary statistics are probably not great for a simulation. All right, uh, again, we have this mean is 1.5 million, but looking at the standard deviation, all right, it's almost as big as the mean. All right, which sort of uh, gives us an idea uh, that there's going to be a wide range of ending values. Okay, uh, I'll go ahead and do it one more time, and so I can send up set up a. Uh, A variable for the for the last row. All right, and then um, if 
you don't want to do all the formatting I did above, right, we can get ending values. And then I can use the describe function, which is part of pandas. All right, and I can get some of the same stuff, plus a, a couple more uh, statistics, the quartiles. Okay. All right, so we can see, you know, comparing actually the median here, 1.18 million to 1.15 million mean, we can see that this data is is skewed, all right? So uh, if we were going to use anything, uh, we might use the median to get a to get a good idea of, of uh, you know, where 50% of the portfolio values are going to end up being under and above. Okay, I'm going to uh, also plot a histogram for this data. And I will plot it with a lot of bins so that we can get a pretty good idea of what's going on. Can you scroll down a bit? And there, here is the distribution of uh, ending values. All right, so we can see that there is no chance of having a zero. All right, so that it's bounded on the left somewhere above zero here. Uh, we can see that most of the values are somewhere in this range. And looking at the scale, uh, the scale is 10 million. So way out here, that's 16 million, 14, 12. All right, and we can see that pretty much uh, by the time we get out to around 4 million, all right, maybe a little bit higher, uh, there's pretty much no chance of seeing uh, portfolios uh, around there okay if we go down here around 2 million though we can see that um, yeah there is some probability that that we'll see something uh, 2 million or higher between 2 and 4 million say all right or 2 and 6 all right and certainly uh, most of the the density here is going to be less than 2 million dollars Okay, so getting back to our original question, what's the probability that we have uh, less than a million dollars? I can calculate that pretty directly by slicing off some values in our table of ending values. All right, so I'm just gonna mask out those that are less than a million dollars. And if I run that, we can see that okay about 40 percent of them are less than a million dollars all right and to get the probability okay we run that and yep it's about 40 percent are less than a million that means there's a 60 percent chance of having somewhere uh, more than a million dollars all right, and then the last thing that you might want to look at is just some individual percentiles. So I set up a variable here. I'm going to use the numpy percentile function, pass in the ending values, and then uh, just sort of arbitrarily uh, set up some percentiles that I want to see. I'll go ahead and run this. All right, and we can see that there is a 95% chance that we'll have more than 400,000. Okay, so. Uh, pretty much we're expecting to have more than 400,000. That's good since we invested 310,000. Okay, uh, there is a still very good chance that we have uh, anything uh, over 500,000, 600,000, and 750. All right, so there's a 75% chance that we have somewhere higher than 750. Okay, so I hope that has helped with an introduction to Monte Carlo simulation.